everyone. So um, my name is Vern, and I am currently a junior developer at uh, Shopee Singapore. And today I'm going to talk to you about what I um, built as uh, the, the first project to tinker with red hooks. And it's got to do with a dance move. And that is none other than the moonwalk. So I think you already have known that it's popularized by Ma Michael Jackson. Um, OK, I'm going to do something stupid. <laughs> I'm going to demo <laughs> uh, the dance. I think I should take this off. Oh. It's OK. I don't need to speak. It's OK. okay. <laughs> okay. Um, the thing is, I, I get this top once. So, uh, I don't want the second time to be the same as the first time. I wanted to try something crazy. Uh, but but the, as you see, I had no idea that this is going to be a carpet. So, um, <laughs> that means I'm going to have to take off my shoes. Uh, if you don't mind, just pretend I'm wearing my shoes anyway. They yeah, are both light. My socks and my shoes. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 need, I, I need my. You can't have a moonlight inside. I have to. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, let, let's see if we can put it off. Um, okay, let's see. Okay, there's, there's not enough friction. Um, no, there's too much friction. So, it's basically, <laughs> you get the idea. So, thank you. Um, can I click on? Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so, um, if there's any dancer in the house, I apologize. But don't worry, I have a better dancer for you. Um, just meet my uh, tummy in crime. Can you clip the microphone? Now? Oh, shit. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, I call this, I call this partner in crime, Tiny Dancer. That's the name of a song by Elton John. And um, unfortunately, he's not going to dance on the floor, but on my personal block. Uh, so this is my project, which uses React Hook. And um, we have a start button, which is to toggle, toggle whether the dancer is moving on the screen. Here we have um, the interval between his consecutive dance. So uh, let's see how it turns out. In order to make him move faster, I just need to reduce the interval. And when he goes out of screen, he's go back. <laughs> now, um, at this point, if this is all to my demo, it's going to be sad. But um, um, I mean, fortunately, he can do not one dance, but two. So what's the, the other dance? It's the duck walk. No, no, no. <laughs> for, for safety reason, I'm not going to demo this. But OK, let's talk about, uh, a bit about the duck, duck walk. Um, the duck walk um, can be traced back um, as far as T-Bone Walker, or even older than that. But the person who popularized, popularized this move is Chuck Berry. So we have Chuck Berry on the bottom left corner. T-Bone Walker is uh, the top right corner. And a lot of people have imitated this uh, dance so far. Uh, most prominent is uh, ACDC's Angus Young. And we have also Keith Urban, um, a country musician. He's actually imitating Angus Young version. So the, the original version of uh, Chuck Berry looks something like this, actually. So. Sorry. So as you can see, he's um, basically he's moving forward. So it's uh, like the reverse of Moonwalk, but um, one way forward, he has to um, bend his knee a lot. Um, the he he later on adopted a more hopping style, so only one of his feet is on the ground at all time. And the person who took this to the extreme is actually Angus Young. My favorite version is actually Angus Young because the level of energy that he uses while he's doing the walk makes it not only it's no longer a walk; it's either a run or a dance. And and as you can see, he can actually do a solo on the guitar while dancing. Um, that's why a Tiny Dancer is going to use his version, Angus Young's version. Um, oh, because it's a moving forward uh, dance, so I turn him around. So uh, this is how it goes. I thought it's music effect. <laughs> but yep. So that's it for the demo. 
Um, let's just quickly go through how I use uh, hooks for this demo. Um, first of all, we have the very basic built-in hook, which is a use state. So uh, you have seen from the previous talk how use state uh, can be used. Um, it allows us to manipulate one variable in the state by uh, giving us a setter to change the value of the, of the variable, variable, as well as the getter, which is to get the um, to retrieve the current value. So let's uh, take as example the start and stop button here, which will decide whether the dancer is moving or not. Um, what we want here is that when we click on the button, it will toggle um, the, the current status of moving or not moving, which means that the callback of the button is the setter itself, and the text on the button is uh, dependent on the, the value of the getter. Now, so far, as far as the simple hooks go, it looks pretty neat because um, I feel it's nice to be more declarative about what we want to change. So compared to the class component version, um, whether you are changing the um, which dance mode you're on or what is the delay, you're going to call the same set state function. But in the hooks version, you can, you, you, okay, you have to name more different names, but, but you can be more declarative about what you are changing. So that's my personal preference. Um, and you can also be the, um, declarative about the effects. Usually for uh, class components, the number of life cycle com um, methods that you can use to update is quite limited. But with hooks, you can have as many use effects as you want to. And the nice thing is that, um, as we have seen from the previous talk, you, have, um, you can specify a list of dependencies in the effect. With hook, you can slot the dependency into the respective effect without putting them in one whole chunk together. So my pers that's my personal preference because it's easier to separate the concerns this way. Well, it's not always a bad process, of course. Um, the most tricky part about this demo actually is the, to, um, it's quite clear that to move him around, you need a set interval somewhere. and. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, with hook, that means war. Because the model of hooks and set interval do not align completely. So to demonstrate this point, I am going to use a demo by Dan Abramov. It's actually a simple counter, which will just increment every second. So this is uh, quite a decent looking um, attempt to use set interval inside use effect but it has a uh, strange behavior in the extreme case. So the reason is that for set interval, once you declare it, you can't interfere in between. You can only clear the interval and declare another one. But use effect is another model altogether. It always reapplies the effect for every render. And every time it reapplies, it forget about the previous state. So you can imagine them as a pair of friends. Let's say they have a small quarrel. Set interval is the one that every time you meet, right, they, they will always remember the quarrel. But use effect is your carefree friend who will just greet you as, as if nothing happened. So unless something changed in uh, the mood of set interval, they're going to remember the, the, the what happened previously. But use effect doesn't have the memory of that at all. So if the problem lies in, um, um, the problem lies in the fact that um, for for set interval, we have to clear the interval after it has done his work. So um, in this code, the thing is, every time you reapply the effect, you will clear the interval right away. So in the extreme case, if the interval is small enough, before the next render, the previous interval has already been cleared. That is the extreme case. So how do we, um, how do we avoid this, uh, this strange behavior? What if, instead of always reapplying, we never reapply the effect at all. Um, in hook, in order to do that, you just pass an empty array into the list of dependencies. So um, if we only declare one set interval and never reapply, does it work? Well, not quite. Because the, um, let, let's say that our initial value for the count variable is zero. The thing is, because we only apply it once, inside the set count, the value of count is going to be only the first, the first value, which is zero. So every time the set count is called, 
it will just increment 0 to 1. So how this uh, behaves is that it will be 0 first, and then it, it will increase to 1, and then stay as 1 forever. Uh, if you are an experienced JavaScript uh, user, you might recognize this behavior, and that is none other than the JavaScript closure. So um, in order to really understand how hooks work or how to work with hooks, um, it's just a necessary evil to understand JavaScript closure. So how do we solve this? If we reapply every time, it's not going to work all the time. But if we don't apply at all, it's going to be worse. Fortunately, then everyone has uh, his own recommended solution. So his um, suggestion is that we use two use effects instead of one. One of them is to um, initialize the first interval. And the other will always save the latest callback that is uh, that, that was uh, retained in the previous render. So how this works together is that, um, first of all, here we only have delay in the list of um, dependency. That means for every value of delay, um, we are never going to reapply the effect. So that solves the problem of the first attempt. And second of all, the, in the, the use effect, um, the upper use effect, we always save the call back in the previous render, so it will encapsulate the latest properties, the latest values. So that solves the issue of the second, um, the second attempt. Now, um, well, that's probably uh, the end of my talk. I just have one recommended talk um, by Sean in the JSConf Asia this year. He's going to show you how to implement your own version of Hook. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.